guys, it's me, Andrea, the cat lady. That's two T's, C-A-T-T, -T, which stands for Craft All the Things. And I'm here with another special edition of What Can We Make with the Yarn Inspirations Red Heart Granny Square All-in-One Yarn. So, uh, if you have not checked out my first video in my initial take on the yarn, plus a few demonstrations of a few different squares and motifs I've made, please click the little card up above. I can't remember what side it comes on. And that'll take you to part one. This is part two where I kind of explore more things to make. I work on some knitting projects with it too. It, honestly, it's a self-striping yarn. That's all it is. So for knitters, that's pretty common. There's a lot of uh, indie dyers that make self-striping yarn. Knit Picks Felici, I had mentioned before, that's a self-striping yarn. It's just like color repeats that the yarn stripes on its own and it's you but it's usually the same amount so you'll have six rows per per color for like a sock or something and that's popular you make socks um I could I could show you my foot right now I'm wearing a sock with Knit Picks Felici but I will not uh, maybe I will put a picture of a pair of self-striping socks you all know what they look like so you, knitting with this is basic pretty basic however you can't make a full sweater because you know you're not going to get enough rounds. You could potentially make striped sleeves though which I have not done but I'm going to move right into the knitting since I've been talking about knitting. I made a hat and this looks really cute. So this is the called the Enchanted Evening Cap. It's by Amy from Happy Little Yarn. It is on Ravelry. I believe it's only, I believe this one's free and she is coming out well, with an expanded edition, the deluxe edition which has multiple sizes that will be a dollar. So I will put in a picture of what this looks like on. It's super cute. It's a little big. I, I didn't swatch or gauge. I just went with it. And so it's kind of a, a bigger fit, I feel like, than like when I made it out of a different worsted weight yarn. I mean, this is kind of a thicker Aran weight yarn, maybe. If, but like, if I changed the needle size or if I did anything different, I would lose the stripe on this. Now, okay, if I made it a little smaller, that would be fine. Like if I just cast on less stitches. But like I only get one row of this initial color and then I get two rows of the next, about two rows of the next, three to four of this one and three to four of the last one. But like, I love the patterning. It's like really cute. And I put a little palm on it. I still have all the yarn attached, uh, not woven in because I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it or not, but it's it's cute. If you made a scarf, there's a scarf pattern on the Yarn Inspirations website for this. You could just do a striped scarf. You, and like I said, you could do striped sleeves. Anything that's like narrow would stripe. So for knitting, that's, it's kind of a fun. Uh, I did, I do have like an Addy King Size Express. It's a cranking machine that you can crank out hats. Pretty much just hats. <laughs> hats and scarves and stuff like pretty quick. And it did not like this yarn, which honestly I've used like Bernat and Red Heart and like cheapy acrylic. Like it works well with Joanne Big Twist. It works well with Karen Simply Soft, but for some reason I don't think I've ever gotten to work well with Red Heart or Bernat, like Super Saver. Uh, it has a weird like stickiness to it almost, like it's got like a sizing in it that's just not good. And honestly, a lot of people complain Red Heart is scratchy and it is sort of, and it doesn't bother me, but when you wash it, it changes a lot. So if I like wash the yarn first, maybe it would run through the machine but it wasn't worth it. It would look super cute if it, if I could get it to work. Maybe it's my machine. Those machines are temperamental and like some, some people's machines will work well with the yarn, some won't. Mine does not. So it made a lot of errors like tuck stitches and stuff that it's hard to see, but like it, it was, it's hard, better to see on the inside there. You can see all those weird tucked, like it, like grab two stitches at once and stuff and like it was not good. And I tried it twice and it, it wasn't going to work. So that's going to go. So as far as knitting is concerned, it's a self-striping yarn. You can't, I mean, if you did something larger, it would probably do some weird pooling. I have uh, heard, I had some comments uh, on my last video saying they were going to, people were going to try to do some planned pooling. And that's when you like attempt to make the yarn go where you want it to go by manipulating the yarn, basically. So I think you like leave the, leave a bunch of tails around. I'm not 100% sure. I've never done it. So, but that is that. Then I had someone ask, oh, no, I won't get to that yet. I'm, then I made, I just straight up crocheted a hat just to see what it would look like. So I made a bucket hat. Usually I make these out of cotton. I think it's cute. 
it's not really shelf striping but it's kind of self striping i mean obviously it like has a weird stripey like some areas are more stripey looking than the others but it's like a spiral spiral kind of thing so when you cast on it was kind of like spirally so but yeah it almost looks like a seam there but that's not the seam but this is the seam there's the seam that you can see where it jogs because that's just the way it is and again i'll put a picture of how this looks on it's cute i'm not keeping this um i don't wear i wear bucket hats in the summer and i make them out of cotton probably won't wear this one so i still don't know what i'm doing with this yarn so i i made sure to end each one and actually this one ended at white and so did the knit hat but i made sure to keep the whole repeat so like if i'm making squares or motifs or something with this yarn this took four this will just come apart and be four different little motifs of something and then same with the hat and then this is this one's literally still attached so not to this one though it's attached to this one i, I have six skeins of this so i like kind of just started pulling from different skeins randomly and making things happen so in other things i finally got in other in other things i finally got my seven millimeter hook so of course i had to try out a traditional square with the seven millimeter because the six millimeter didn't work for me it just I, i'd have too much left over six and a half millimeter i had a weird hook it was like a susan uh, it was a boy hook and it just didn't it didn't work out either the eight millimeter sort of worked but like it still didn't work on the final row same with the seven millimeter i made every row work just fine until i got to the final row and i crocheted pretty tight for that and it did not pan out i still have one more cluster and a chain two. I only chained two in the corners as well. And that worked out perfectly. But this is a horrible square. This is absolutely atrocious. This is not how I make squares. It's too, um, it's just too big. The gauge is too big. I just don't like it. It's floppy and it's huge. So just to continue experimenting, I went ahead and made a square the way I like to make the square with the hook size, I like to make the square and just to see what the yarn would do. And it looks like this. I don't hate it. It's not what it's supposed to be, but I don't hate it. It's just a fun, scrappy square. And if you then start it, and actually I made six rows on this one, two, three, four, five. I ended up doing six rows just for the heck of it because I didn't like it ending at the white, honestly, because it went like, let's see, well, let me just take it out because I'm probably not keeping this anyway. So let's see where it ended on the last row. Okay, was it right there? No. Oh, wait, I think I took it out too far. I don't know. I ended like half, half the white row or something. It was like, it was like this or something. Or, oh no, it's right there. Okay. Okay. Ended like this. Which, I, I mean, isn't terrible either. You know, like if you wanted to go around the whole square with a different color and join them together, make it match like that, you could do that. But that's a five round. I liked it better with the extra rounds. It kind of ended better. But then if you started the next square with this color, it would look totally different, but like match. So I have a shirt I will put in a picture uh, that uh, the top of uh, it was like a boho granny tank top. And it was using Bernat stripes, but the stripes I think were all the same repeats. But I just took a, to started going and I just made my squares so they were all look different, but they all look the same. Like they're all cohesive because they're all the same colors, but they're all different. And then put them on. And I think, think it's super cute. So like if you just want to make squares that look fun and unique and have a cohesive color, if you like the colors, I've had a lot of people that aren't a fan of these colors. So, but this isn't terrible because I obviously cannot make granny squares out of this yarn. That is not going to happen to me unless I go back to my altered way of doing it and slip stitching around to get to the color change could do that um but look at how neat and tidy this is this is one chain in the corner no chains in between and it just looks so much better than this like that looks sloppy and huge and this looks just neat and tidy so that's just my preference so obviously the I still am floored that people can get this to work with like a G5 or what is that a 4.5 millimeter hook I mean that's blows my mind and I will say there was a difference between colorways so at the end of this video I will have a demonstration on how I made this so this is the someone requested or asked in the last video if 
you could make an African flower in a square. So I googled some uh, patterns. I found a video, which will, I will link below. And I altered the crap out of it because it wasn't going to work the way that was written. But basically, you have to make the flower eight petals. So the original African flower hexagon I made was six. So this has to be eight to make it even, make your square. You have to have even distribution of, for the corners. You have to block this thing, which uh, I plan on posting a short YouTube short at some point on how I block. This is not officially blocked. This is just on my board hanging out. As soon as I take it off, it kind of shrivels up a little bit. It needs to be steamed or wet blocked. I usually steam acrylic. I I recommend heat. It needs to be it needs to be killed. So they so they say a little. So it needs heat. So this needs to be like steamed and then put on this. But I made. And actually, I'll show you because I'll pull this off right now. So this was the white one or the white white and orange colorway. But I originally made the other colorway, the black Cyberleaf. I made this colorway first. And I'm, this color just looks so good in the flowers. I mean, I like the I like this one too, but like this one just looks so good. That's definitely my favorite. And I like it in the square. If I honestly, if I would have figured this out first, I may have gone this route because I'm not sure what I'm going to do, how I'm joining the hexes and how that's going to work for a whole blanket. But yeah, this thing gets all wonky when you pull it off. But here's the thing. I used two different hook sizes. I still had to do a little bit of slip stitching on the row, the fifth, fifth fourth row, fourth row, one, two, three, the fourth color. That color I couldn't get to work to save my life, like without a little bit of slip stitching. However, I used a different hook size on the black. So for the black one, I used so for the first time for the first round, I did a 5.5 millimeter, then went to the six millimeter. That's right, I did not use any millimeter. For the orange one, I did a five millimeter, then the six millimeter. So I only had a half millimeter difference for the black one, but I had to go a whole millimeter difference for this one. I will, I, in the video, I am, uh, I am showing you how to make made this one. So I will, and I talk about the changes and stuff too. Lastly, if you wanted to play around with it, you can crochet a scarf, just a small little stripey scarf. And basically you, you really just need to pay attention to how many stitches you get per color. So I just I just played around and, and figured out I can get 14 double crochets from the first color. And then obviously I can get a little bit more in the second round, but not quite double. So I did a row of double crochet and then I did a row of half double crochet. And, and then I think, uh, I think I, and a row of single crochet. I couldn't do two full rows of double, that didn't work. But when I did a double, a half, and then a single, it lined up and then this is and then the third color was the same thing I did a double half double double single so like I just played around until rows worked and obviously it's wonky looking because of all the different changes I think and you would want to put in a border on it to kind of clean it up but it would be a cute just like stripey like mini scarf like if you made it really long and then you kind of wrapped it a couple times I think it would look super cute so that, and I will write all the formulas that I wrote for, that I have for these. Like if you want to see any, me make any of these, like in real time, like a, a, a demonstration. I'm not calling it a tutorial because I'm not showing you how to make stitches and stuff. If you'd like me to demonstrate anything that you've seen here, please let me know and I can make videos on that. But currently I, the, the end of the video only demonstrates this one. So, but if you want to see how I made the bucket hat, or the scarf or that's it those are the only two <laughs> the extras I mean I have the this this is a there's a pattern for this the enchanted evening hat it's a hat if you're a knitter and you probably are aware of how to make a hat so this wasn't anything specific I did follow a video for this at some point but I'm gonna try my hardest to find it but I had written down the pattern for this it's very very basic it's nothing super complex um but I'd like to credit the original maker of this hat if I can find it but it was like years ago that I wrote this pattern down on a note card so that's I just followed that um 
And then, yeah, the scarf, I'll write down, I can write down exactly the repeats I did. But it's, again, it's based on my gauge and my hook. I'm pretty sure I used a six millimeter because that's what I've been using for everything. Because that seems to be the, or maybe I used the 5.5. The one that the recommended hook. I might have used the recommended hook on this. I don't know if I wrote it down either. So, but you just need to figure out your gauge and figure out what works to make this work. If you want to go beyond the granny or if you just can't make a granny like me without it making it look like obnoxiously huge. So, but I, I don't know. This one, I really like this one. I might end up doing something like this where I just make random granny squares and put them together because... I could, I don't know, could I get more? Yeah, I could get more out of this. I could potentially get more than 15 if I stopped here because I have a whole bunch of weight left that could then start the next square. So then that square is going to start with white in the center and who knows where it's going to end and it's going to just be random. So, I mean, that could be cute. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like the randomness or do you think like, okay, this is supposed to be, supposed to work the way it's supposed to work. So let me know what you think. So that's it. That's all the additional things I have to share. That's probably all I'll do now. <laughs> I've pretty much exhausted my thought process on this yarn and obsessed over it enough that I think I'm, I think I'm satisfied. If you have any other ideas you'd like me to try, let me know because I will try them because they are fun to experiment. Um, <clears throat> and again, if you want to see anything like demonstration wise, I can do that as well. Uh, but my end takeaway is experiment. If you're having trouble with it, just kind of just try to have fun with it because a lot of people are frustrated and upset and I totally understand because that's where I was at first. Then when you figure out, you can kind of like manipulate it a little bit, even if it's just slip stitching, because that's not a big deal. And it really doesn't change the look of the stuff that at the end, it's not noticeable. Texture wise, you kind of feel it's a little thicker in some spots, but it's not super noticeable. Just, just, just make it happen. Just do whatever you want with it. So I'm sure knitting wise, you're going to get some fun pooling uh, and, and flashing and stuff. And like, just try not to stress too much on it. If you like it, then that's all that matters. Uh, there have been complaints about the color splotchiness, and I agree that there is a lot of, like, areas of the white. Let's see if I can find some. Of course, it's not going to be on the one I have here. There's a lot of areas that, like, okay, so, like, there's, like, like this. There's a lot of that, like, I don't know if you can see it, where the colors are, like, all over, like, it, like these spots here. It's not great. And that's a, that's a yarn problem that obviously you have no control over and so I had someone comment saying that they were super disappointed they wasted their money the yarn was all muddy and I said you got to contact the company hopefully they can take it back or take it back to the store because that's not acceptable if it's bad enough where it's going to ruin your whole project then that's not acceptable and that's that's a manufacturing defect that is going to be there no matter what because every skein has had those little spots places but like most of the time they're not noticeable like so I'm sure there's they're in here but by the time I crochet them in it's not noticeable same with the black I've had the same same thing there's like black splotch splotches and like the lighter greens after that's done it's not super noticeable but if it's a problem if it's everywhere and if it's a like one of the lighter colors it's even worse so hers was like a brown one of the brown I think the tan and white kind of combo and it just looks gross it just looks she's like it looks muddy and that's that's not cool. So, but overall, I do want to buy more. <laughs> I do want, I kind of want to buy, like, I don't know if I, if I, if I buy another couple skeins of this color so that I can keep this hat. Cause like the more I look at this hat, the more I like it. <laughs> so, but I also like kind of, I kind of like some of the, like the neutral colors as well. So I don't know. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Thanks again for watching. I hope this helps. Hope this helps people just like figure it out and don't be afraid to experiment. Some people don't have the time to experiment. I wasted my whole weekend. Like I have projects I could be working on, other projects that need to be done. But honestly, I was waiting for the seven millimeter hook for a specific project I'm working on, um, which I talk about in my regular episodes. So now that I have this, I can work on that. So now I'm done experimenting with this yarn. I got that out of the way, got that on my system. I can work on my my project and I have other little projects I'm working on as well so but yeah that's 
that's all I have. Uh, so stay tuned for the tutorial if you're inter uh, demonstration if you're interested and let me know below if there's anything else you'd like to see. Thanks. Hello, I am back with a not really tutorial but a technique kind of the pattern of how I got the African flower into a square. It is not perfect by no means. Honestly, I made this one and I had to use a size five and a half millimeter, so 5.5 millimeter for the inner sections. And then I switched to the six millimeter for the last two rounds. For the one I'm going to be making today out of this color, I needed to start with a five millimeter hook to get it to work and then switched to the six millimeter, six millimeter hook for the final two rounds. So it's very finicky and I just, um, with experimenting with this yarn, you just need to play. You just need to play and you need to experiment. And so someone had asked me if the African flower, so the traditional African flower that I made before in my first video, this one here, if it could go into a square. So I Googled some patterns, I used, I used a video tutorial, which I will link below to for the basis, but I completely like just, I mean, I pretty much followed the same two rounds for hers and then kind of went off the, and used the same premise for the rest of the rounds, but kind of went off the rails a little bit and adapted to make it work for this yarn. <laughs> and of course, I again, I had to use two different hooks and it just wasn't super straightforward. And I still had to use my slip stitch technique for this round, this dark, the round one, two, three, four. And I had to go around like half the square. But you know what? It, you can't tell. Like, can you see where I slip stitch? If you look really closely, I think maybe here. And you can feel it's a little bulkier. So I think like I slip stitched. Yeah, so this is where I started. So like here to here to here or something. <laughs> so, um, but whatever. So I'm going to show you. It, obviously, it, you can do it or you cannot do it. And maybe your gauge will be better and with different hook sizes and you can get it to work. But this third color just had too much left over no matter what. Like, I'm not going up another size. So, like, maybe if I went up to an 8, but, like, I don't really want to because, again, I don't like how the fabric starts getting loose on that size. And it has to be blocked. This thing looks horrible not blocked. So you will see when I'm done with this one. It's not going to look great. So without further ado... Let's get started. So with this one, I have to start with a short tail. I, I need all the yarn possible. So I started with which, with a four inch tail, which is what was recommended with the original pattern, which is really tiny tail. I, mean, I usually leave a lot longer, but like I needed the yarn. So we got a four inch tail. Okay, it's five. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it with five. I'm using the five millimeter hook. And we are going to pretty much start the same. The only difference with this is it's eight petals instead of six. It's, so it's not a hexagon, it's eight. So it's an actual more of a flower shape because you need that even, or that, you need that to make the the corners, to have equal spacing for the corners. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five. And I needed to crochet very tightly as well. So not only did I have to use a smaller hook, I my tension had to be like spot on tight. So there might be some ripping out. Chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Second double crochet, double crochet, chain one. And then you make these little two piece clusters. So two double crochets, chain one. And you repeat that until you have eight of them. So you'll have 16 stitches. Okay, so I ended at my chain one and I'm right where I need to be. So then we will slip into the first chain three and then we will slip over and I just go through the back loop because it hides it better I feel until we get to the first chain one space. Slip into there and then we are on the second round. So the second round is starting with a chain three and again I still have to be really tight. Double crochet into that same space, chain one, double crochet, two. And this is the same as round two with, basically round one and two are the same for both flowers. So this leaves a little bit of a hole. It, it does close up a bit. You just gotta have to sew it in because it's it's really tight. 
So anyways, so you have the two clusters, chain one, two clusters into every chain one space. So you will do that eight times. So you will have double, you'll have four clusters, eight clusters of four. So we'll do the first one. So we have two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. And I, again, for me personally, I am keeping this super tight or else I will run out of yarn. Okay, I'm back to the start, chain one slip, right where I need to be. So did I chain, oh, I think I chain, did I chain one? Oh, I think I forgot to chain, chain one. Chain one at the end, don't forget to chain one at the end, then slip. And I am right at the next color. And it, it's, it's, it's a little, yeah, that needs to be blocked for sure. And again, my fabric is very tight because my crochet, my gauge is tight. And yeah, I don't, don't love that but it's not, it's not that bad. Okay, so now we are on the third round, which we are gonna do chain three, and then again, I'm still, or no, I need to, sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize. I need to slip over to the chain one. So in between the clusters, we're gonna slip over one. And then slip stitch into that chain one gap. Okay, so now we're in the center here. And so we're going to be working in between these clusters of four. And this is where, this is again, this is similar to the original African Violet that I did, but we are only going to do six. So we are going to chain three, that counts as our first double crochet, and we are going to do six total. So that's two, that's three, four, five, six. Six double crochet into the center of those two, the clusters. So we skip this part and we go into the center of the four where we chained one. And we are gonna do six. See, the original pattern called for seven. I could not get seven to work. So then we just had to start adapting from there. And I tried different hook sizes and nope. <laughs> I could only get six to work with a size five millimeter. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I could have loosened up just a hair, so I will just pull out a few. And, oh, go back to this, that one here. And we'll just loosen up just a little bit. Oh, wait a second. Oh yeah, okay, that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Sometimes I get confused by those middle sections there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go back to the two. So this is, yeah, so honestly, I've had to do a lot less uh, trial and error this round than I, or this go through of the thing than I, the whole, than I have before. But this is what this yarn makes me do every time. In the long run, I still feel like it's faster than changing up yarn. It's more portable. I don't have to bring like five, five skeins of yarn. But again, you just gotta be willing to experiment and kind of be happy to kind of shush things up. Okay, so this is a weird spot there. It looks like its color is supposed to be changing, but it's got that weird spot in there, but I don't care. So for this one, I want to be sure to, cause usually I just slip into the middle here and I don't care. But for this one specifically, I need to pick up these two top loops because I'm using this as a stitch that I need to stitch into. So I'm gonna slip stitch into that. So now we were on one, two, three, round four. round four. Okay, I accidentally just recorded that whole, this whole next section with the wrong hook. So I am back to switch hooks to the six millimeter. So we were going to switch hooks to the six millimeter and we are going to start working on building up our corners. So we are going to start in that first stitch. I did a chain one. We are going to single crochet into this first stitch, which it's a little tight, especially since you're changing hook size, but single crochet three times. One, two, three. We're going to half double. One. We are going to double crochet two, which brings you to this middle section. And this is where you in the original pattern, you would pull down into this. So in the original, in the African flower pattern I did, this round was very, 
was pull you this was the round you pulled down to the into the thing into the space to make it kind of look like a flower and the pattern I linked below same thing but I am adapting this way I am way adapting this at this point the pattern linked below does the same thing as the original where it just single crochets doubles into this little spot and singles around to make a whole little layer I am turning this layer into the corner layer because this is the only way I could make this yarn work because that's just this yarn so and but again I like the way it turned out but it's very different than the original pattern and this is my adaptation of that pattern so when you get to this center stitch area you're going to do a treble crochet which is two wraps around down into this space so one two three that's your treble your chain one i'm going to do a second treble into that same space one two three so that essentially builds the corner there and then you're going to reverse what you just did so you did three singles a half two doubles two trebles so now we're going to do two doubles half three singles and it'll take you to the next take you over this next petal now you have to find this little hoop uh loop that's hidden because we did not put any there's no chain spaces here this is not a chain space but it leaves a space so you this is technically the first stitch here so this belongs to this guy so we are going to double into that one so double crochet double crochet half double crochet so we're building it back down essentially and then three singles so that makes a course see that makes your little corner and this has to be blocked this has to be blocked there's no not blocking allowed uh, you can block acrylic uh, it's I use a steamer so I will actually do a video at some point of steam blocking because that's what I've been doing for all my African violets here so they're nice and flat and what I showed you I showed you my blocking board to start so that's what it looks like so we're at this second gap here so we're not building another corner here because this is the center your corner will be over here so we want to just do a double into that space to make give you that little lift that little bar thing and so that fills in that space and then we are going to start over so we do three singles one two Three. and I can be loose on this round because I always have leftover so I'm trying to be a little loose I'm trying to loosen up a little bit three singles a half two doubles and perhaps you could play around with this even more and do like three half double half doubles a double trebles and then make it more but I mean it's already pretty like huge hole there with the trebles so I wouldn't want to go into like a four quad quadruple I don't know what quadruple I don't I don't know if there's a term for that so I'm fine with this it just requires a little slip stitching but so okay we did three singles two doubles there we are one two three singles half double two doubles okay so now we're back at this little space here where we do the two trebles into the space below one two three chain one second treble one two three okay and then we are going to find that hidden stitch and do a double double half double single 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 back to that space so we're at two corners here again you can see how important it is the block and it's probably the case no matter what just because the way the shape is it probably has to be blocked but this I feel like since I have different hooks and gauges and it's tight and whatever that like that's part of the reason but so we're at this gap here we're going to double And then we're going to continue on so we're starting over three singles half double double treble 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 into that and all the way around so i will meet you back when i get to the end okay so we made it back to the end we ended on three singles we want to do the double crochet into that space to finish up the pattern so we end on the double so now these the corners have two the sides have one and we are going to skip slip back into the first stitch so there's our chain one we're slipping into the first stitch here 
So I'm left with this. Uh, this is actually, I feel like, pretty good <laughs> compared to, I think, the first time. But I'm still going to, it's still going to probably go like halfway around. So I'm going to just, I'm going to slip into the whole stitch since it's the same color. It doesn't matter. It just makes it a little thicker here. I mean, which is like, I don't know. Maybe if this was a wearable, it'd be noticeable because you can kind of feel it. But personally, I don't, it doesn't bother me that much. So, like the stitch. Kind of. It's up to you if you just want to slip into the stitch or go into the corner. I kind of try to go into the stitches here. So, I'm going to slip stitch around until I am out of yarn. Okay, honestly, that wasn't that bad. I only made it like a over a corner. So I like literally the one, the black one I showed you, I like literally slipped like around the whole za half of the square. So that was, that was pretty good. So now we are at the last round and we are just building, building around. So let's see, I have doubled around. So we are gonna, I'm gonna chain one, start in this first stitch that we slipped into here. And we're gonna just half double around until we get to the corner. So I'll show you what I do when I get to the corner. I'm using the same hook. I did actually try double crocheting around. I thought I'd have enough yarn and I ran out. So double crochet didn't work for me. Now, could I go back down a hook size? Maybe, but I don't know. I liked having, I liked having the bigger hook at the end. So we're at the corner. We are gonna do two half doubles, chain one, and two more half doubles. And then we're going to continue half doubling around into the next corner. Okay, we're back to the next corner space and we're going to just do right into the space. Two half doubles, chain one, and two more. And you will continue this around back to where you started. So which your starting point might be, you could potentially start in a corner, you could potentially start anywhere. <laughs> depending on your slip stitching. Okay, so now I'm at the spot where I started slip stitching. So you can see you have this like kind of V facing you. So you go under, you can see where the stitch is right there. So you go under, under all that half double. So you're going under three, three loops essentially. So it's a little tight, but Honestly, I think I end up just going into that whole the whole circle at that point. That whole there's technically like a little loop in there or just the whole space and I just I just go through the whole space. Cuz it doesn't look that much different. <laughs> so So that's what I'm doing. Oops, what am I doing here? So now I'm back to the end. I just slip stitch to the first into the first stitch. And I have a little bit of white left, but not a terrible amount, honestly. That's not like, it's not as much as I have for the other one, honestly. So, um, and that looks awful like that. So you can use a blocking mat and pins, of course, but I bought this board specifically. It's got a kitty on it. You can't see it's under there. You can see his little body, little ear. Uh, I bought this specifically to block my African violets out. So, but I would steam this first lightly. Again, I will try to do a video of steaming at some point, but I would take this with my ste clothing steamer and just like kind of keep sticking on there lightly. Or, you know, if you had it on a, I don't like, I don't want to like steam the wood particularly, so I don't like steam right on this. But if I had this maybe on something and just lightly steamed, maybe the back side and front side, and it, you can, it loosens up immediately. And like, I don't want to kill the acrylic essentially and loosen it up too much. But once you loosen it up, because if I take this black one off, it's still going to be kind of shrink up a bit. It's not like going to hold a spot. But once you steam it and then stick it on this, or you could wet block it, but that's not really. So then you find the corners and then you find your center, center spot. So like here and here and here, approximately. Come on. There it goes. And there's, there she is. Not bad. Like again, if you had a little steam to that, that will, that's going to loosen it up and it's going to not like bow in like that. But that looks pretty good. And that is, that is a square. It is a, 
It is a five and a quarter, a five inch, it's a five inch square, essentially. So it is not the six inch square that the pattern calls for. It is a five inch square. So, but that is how you make an African flower square, which I thought was kind of fun. Now, if I would have realized this before, would I have switched to this? Maybe, because I don't know exactly what I'm doing with my hexes, but I know I love the hexes and I've never done it. So it's kind of fun to play with, but maybe for this, maybe for this yarn, I bought a bunch of this yarn. Maybe I make, maybe I make flowered squares. I don't know. Cause I, the granny square is not working for me like at all. <laughs> That's just like not even an option. So, but there is another option. So and I appreciate everyone that uh, followed along the first tutorial series and got the African flower to work for them. And I think mitered, someone did the mitered square as well. Hopefully, maybe this will work. Hopefully for the person that uh, requested this one, it'll work. Again, it's trial and error, multiple hooks. You gotta, you just gotta play around. So 